I want to bring in Rana Fruhar, John Avalon, and Chris Voss. Um, you know, Rana Fruhar is an assistant managing editor uh, for Time Magazine. John Avalon is CNN political analyst and executive editor for the Daily Beast. <gasps> and Chris Voss is a former FBI lead international kidnapping negotiator. You know, here we are. I can't believe we've got a hostage go to negotiator with us. This is I what it's it. come to. I'm on a money show, and we had to bring in someone who could make sense of what's happening. John Avalon, you tell me first. Have these people lost their minds? What is happening? They, they have a serious case of Stockholm Syndrome. They are effectively being <laughs> held hostage by their own party. This includes Speaker Boehner. Uh, they think, in the classic situation, that the people holding them hostage are their allies, their friends, their base. In fact, they're the people who are making them impotent to deal with this problem, this self-inflicted crisis that now the economy is starting to suffer through. So I think it's an inspired, know, uh, inspired choice to have a hostage so negotiator. Chris, I want you to listen to some of the language we are hearing, the ransom hostage language you're hearing. Listen. You don't get to demand some ransom in exchange for keeping the government running. You don't get to demand ransom in exchange for keeping the economy running. Hostages, ransom, holding a gun to, to the heads of the American people. Um, what, what is the first thing we should do here to step down the crisis level? Well, uh, somebody needs to ask a really good question. Uh, I know that sounds simplistic, but the idea is it's not the answer, it's the response that you're looking for. You ask somebody a question, it makes them stop and think. And then you try to see if you can refocus on something, uh, a common goal. Common ground is commonly uh, used as a term. But try, you, you get people to respond and stop and think. And at that point in time, you see what they say. And, and it's a little bit of a, an ad lib situation. But you have to make people stop and think. And, and they're not really like stopping. I mean, if, if the common goal <laughs> is creating jobs, you don't send 800,000 people home without a paycheck, Rana. Absolutely not. I mean, it's shaving 0.2, 0.3% off the economy growth each week. Um, we've been here 18 times already. We know what happens. It's not good. I mean, you know, the bigger challenge, of course, is if we get to the debt ceiling and we go over that. Because as we've sp spoken about before, that is a really catastrophic economic event. That's a Lehman Brothers style event. And, you know, uh, West Wing aside, we probably would see an incredible global fallout from that. You know, John, what's interesting here is we've got Chris boss, international hostage negotiator, crisis negotiator, and I can't tell who's at war with who. If it's the Democrats and the Republicans, if the Democrats or the Republicans are at war with each other, or just exactly what's happening there. It's all of the above. I mean, part of the problem is people aren't talking. There isn't a backroom mm -hmm. negotiation. There hasn't been the normal kind of pre-negotiations before we went to this crisis because trust is so broken in Washington. Um, so that, that, that is a fundamental problem. You know, Boehner can't control his caucus, and when he tells you know, his, his own members or business that, don't worry, we're not going to default, well, these are a lot of the same leadership that said, don't worry, we're not going to have a shut down. So there's a credibility crisis even within the Republican Party and their key constituencies like business. You have said two words that are really important, I think, credibility and trust. So when you're in a situation like this and neither have either, that causes a real problem when you're trying to stand things down, doesn't it? It does. And, and what you really need to do is you take the word trust out of the equation and you drop in the word predictability. And as soon as you start trying to gauge what people are going to say and do based on what they've done up to that moment of time, they, can be, they become far more predictable. Trust is really an emotional word, and it clouds everybody's thinking and what their expectations are. So you drop in the word predictability instead. Mm. Oh, predictability. It's interesting. Are, are Republicans <laughs> no longer the party of business? That's a question people are asking mm -hmm. this week. Predictably, you think the Republicans are the ones yeah. who are going to do what's in the best interest of the American economy and creating jobs. That's right. But there's a big question about whether things it, are changing. It is a fascinating political shift. And, you know, if you look at business surveys, what what business wants more than anything else is certainty. They just want to know what the rules of the road are going to be. And it's really fascinating that the Republicans that used to be the pro-business party are hijacking the, the process here. Um, you know, I'll just say the thing that I'm most worried about right now is the housing recovery, because that has been something that has really buoyed the economy. Yeah. But if you look at what's happening, the, the Federal Housing Administration has mainly been furloughed. Same with the IRS. People are waiting on their mortgages mm -hmm. to be approved. I mean, this, this is already having serious consequences. And, and, and just to, you know, really put a, a, a clear point on that. I mean, right now, this shutdown is inexorably twined to the debt ceiling. These negotiations will be one and the same, if only because maybe that will be able to focus their minds on coming up with a solution. But the Republican Party, that pro-business backbone of the party, has been hijacked by conservative populists who are hostile to the idea of raising the debt ceiling, people who cheerlead against it because it gets some you know, applause from the cheap seats, and they're not living in economic reality. So that makes it even more difficult for even the responsible Republican mm -hmm. leadership to negotiate with their own members. They know, ultimately, 
ultimately, if this deal gets done, it's going to be centrist Republicans and reaching out to Democrats. The Hastert rule, which even Denny Hastert says doesn't exist, even though it's always invoked, <laughs> is going to have to be blown away for this to get solved. The center's going to have to stand. But Chris Voss, here's what's so interesting to me. It's almost as if you're, you've got one faction saying we're going to burn the whole house down mm -hmm. if we don't get what we want. And then who wins? Right, exactly. It's, it's an awful lot like the, uh, the husband or ex-husband who's taken the ex-wife hostage and says, I love you so much, I'm going to kill you. It just doesn't seem to make any sense at all. And getting them to, to realign their perspective or refocus what their perspective and what their actual goal is, is the only way to get them out of that mode. Frustrations <laughs> are rising, John. And why don't you listen to what John Boehner said on Friday. Well, this isn't some damn game. The American people don't want their government shut down, and neither do I. All we're asking for is to sit down and have a discussion and to bring fairness, reopen the government, and bring fairness to the American people under Obamacare. It's as simple as that. Oh, it's simple. Yeah. Is it simple? <laughs> it's not simple. And, and there, there are a couple things going on there. He's frustrated because he yes. doesn't have the cards to actually be able to drive the negotiation. He doesn't have the votes even to be able to corral his own caucus. But what's really frustrating there is that he enabled the vote that caused this mm -hmm. shutdown. The Republicans mm -hmm. right now who are calling for compromise, the, for, for calling for negotiations, that's a, that's, that is a poll-driven attempt to flip the script because they know they have a fundamental problem. They're negotiating position and increasing with the American people on this. All right, Ronnie, here comes the debt ceiling. How does it end? Oh, my gosh. You know, I just can't believe, like the rest of Wall Street, I'm in a state of disbelief that we could go over it because let's look at what could happen. If we didn't pay our creditors, we would be in a Lehman Brothers style event. We would immediately go back into recession. We would probably push much of the rest of the world back into recession. That is that is an event that can't happen. I mean, just looking back in 1979, we had a tiny technical default on some of our debt because of the word processing equipment that was being used failed. That pushed interest rates up for months uh, by half a percentage point. That raised borrowing costs on Treasury bills by $12 billion. That was a tiny event. Just think if we are wholesale not paying our debt, what would happen? Let me just say that there may be a silver lining here because you're starting to see with the prospect of the debt ceiling focusing minds on the hill not saying let's let's this isn't about Obamacare maybe there's an opportunity for a grand bargain or a modest bargain maybe some actually the legacy items can get done that are real Republican priorities as opposed to simply the obsessive opposition of the president so maybe we'll get a breakthrough but the larger stakes are this this is not how superpowers behave mm. this the rest of the world starts to laugh at us if our That's democracy right. becomes the greatest source of dysfunction the rest of the world we're all laughing at the people in this country are laughing at the, uh, the, you know, at the, at but the you know, it's embarrassing, and you point out something important from an economic standpoint because uh, third world nations, emerging markets, right. tend to behave like this. That's been the behavior of the past, yeah. and guess what? They pay a lot more to borrow money. All right, Chris Voss, I got to tell you, maybe we've been watching too many of these uh, crisis and hostage negotiator movies, right? But um, you got one phone call. This is the this is the end of it. You got one phone call. <laughs> Who do you call to negotiate with? Is it the president? Is it John Boehner? Is it Ted Cruz? You've got one last call to talk sense into someone. Who is it? I call the president. I think uh, the one that has, is in the best position to, to refocus the conversation hmm. Morning, and pick a spot that every, a, a common goal that everybody's after. That, that's who I would start years. with. All right, Chris Voss, very nice to meet you. I know it's a little out of your wheelhouse, but it isn't out of your wheelhouse. That's what's so crazy, John Avalon. Essential. Ron Fruhar, nice to see all you guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you very Thank much. You. Coming up.